Well, great friends of TSB are Hamdan Al Shamsi Lawyers and Associates. And uh, joining us on the phone is Ahmed Al Khali, who is going to discuss how gratuity is calculated if the salary changes during the course of the service. Because this is always an interesting question. People are sometimes a little bit too shy to maybe speak to their management. But Ahmed Al Khali is on the line. Thank you very much for joining us here on TSB. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. So the question is, just say I've been working in a company for 10 years. I drew a basic monthly salary of uh, 6,000 dirhams for nine years. But then I'm given the promotion. I've done really well. Finally, uh, you know, all my I need more money has come to reason and I've got 9,000 over that final year. How is that gratuity calculated? Um, so usually with the, when it comes to the gratuity payment or end of service uh, uh, entitlement, you always base it on the last salary or last basic wage that you have received. It's always, irrespective of how many years you were on, 6,000 dirhams as basic, mm-hmm. the 9,000 is the one that is used for the calculation. Oh, this is interesting. We, now, we weren't aware of this at all. We always, I mean, I was in my mind thinking that they'll probably calculate based on 6,000 for nine years and one year on 9,000. But this is fantastic that you tell us. Yeah, so they always base it on the last salary. The only difference is the, the, the difference between the five years and the five years after that is how much of your basic salary is used to calculate now, but it still is the 9,000. And ba- the, the basic breakdown is for the first five years of your employment, mm-hmm. uh, they calculate the end of service as 21 days of your basic salary. So the 9,000 uh, of uh, for each year that you served in the first five years. Okay. After that, it becomes 30 days of your basic salary Mm -hmm. for the next consecutive years. So it's basically 9,000 times 21 over 30 days. And that will give you per year calculation. That's Mm -hmm. for the first five. Interesting. Third five, uh, yeah. No, I was just saying that the next five is technically 30 days. Full. Exactly. So you get the full 9,000 dirhams of your basic salary. You know, when it comes down to, to workplace changes and you're trying to calculate your uh, your holidays or any of the entitlements, whether it be flight home money, whether that's in your contract or a percentage, um, wh- where is the best place to start for an employee? Because one, it can get confusing. And secondly, uh, many people can feel intimidated by approaching the management of their company about these circumstances. Um, so, I, I mean, our, our, my basic answer is a little biased because we always say, Speak to a lawyer to find out what your rights are. Okay. There are plenty of articles online that do uh, um, give you enough information. I would follow the articles that are drafted or published by law firms as your first point of, of contact. Mm-hmm. Now, once you find out what your law, what your rights are, then you can approach management because at that point you already are in the know. You know that the law says one, two, three. You can speak to them about it. And, and, what, um, and what is the position for an employee? So if you've gone on and you've done the research saying, right, I'm entitled mm-hmm. to this much of my holiday pay, now I'm leaving the company and, and this is my gratuity, what's the response if a company says, you know what, financially we're not in a very good position, we don't have the money mm-hmm. to honour what's in your contract. What, what are the rights mm-hmm. of an employee? Uh, at that point, they'd have to raise a grievance with either the Ministry of Human Resources and Amortisation if they're in mainland, Mm -hmm. or the free zone authority. Now, they they act as mediators between the company and the employee. We've seen it time and time again where the company says exactly what you've said, that, oh, we don't have the money, we can't pay you, or we will pay you later. Well, that is not my problem as an employee. It's my right to be paid according to my contract. That was the binding agreement between both parties. So in raising their grievance with the relevant department, you are taking that much of a step to show them that, listen, okay, I, I, as much as I uh, agree and want to try to help, but I have to protect my own. And right. they try to mediate. If it doesn't work, then your, your point is, at, the, uh, at that point, you'd have to go to the court and raise a claim. But you have a right to, claim, to ask for what is in your contract. Yeah, but then again, you know, it's, it's all, all good and nice, uh, you know, once you have walked out of the organization, you've cancelled your contract and mm-hmm. then you can lock horns with the employee. But while you're still working with the organization, you know, a, people generally think that, hey, you know, if I go up and challenge the employee, mm-hmm. I might end up risking my job. 
you know I, I, there, there are multiple uh, scenarios which where either the paperwork is not clear or you know mm-hmm. what what the organization is offering is say you know the, the basic is very very little just just enough for for them to pass through the law but uh, you know everything else is as an as an allowance or all of your fat salary but how how does one actually go up and uh, you know challenge the employee while they are still working with them i mean again this is this this bottles down to on a case by case basis because mm-hmm. at the end of the day if you are willing to forgo your rights then i don't think it's it's right for you to stay with that company if you're not getting what you're supposed to be getting because it is a right, right at the end of the day now one thing you have to know in the new law that was introduced in february of this year there is one provision in the law that says if an employee goes and files a ser- it's called a serious complaint mm-hmm. we still don't have a definition of what serious is but let's say they weren't paid for 10 days out of their full month okay. and they file a complaint in front of one of these authorities and in retaliation for that complaint the employ- the employer terminates them the courts will award the employee compensation for this retaliation oh, so okay. this is an exception to the rule which says that if you if they retaliate because you were asking for your right then the courts will award you a compensation and how is that compensation so, calculated it, it still has not been determined again i mean the law is relatively new for the calculation we normally go to court of cassation decision they are kind of like the meat on the bone the bone is the law the the meat comes from court decision so mm-hmm. this will be kind of like the notion of precedent in the uk yes. they will determine that it's it'll be you know x amount of days or it'll be x amount of of uh, um uh, uh x amount determined based on the salary i uh, we still have no idea how they're going to complicate uh, how they're going to um calculate that compensation Ahmed, um, Ahmed, there was speak that it might be up to three months, but we don't know, unfortunately. Not yet. I mean, I, I think this is sensational advice. I mean, that advice is always mm-hmm. great to go see uh, a lawyer. Uh, we're speaking to mm-hmm. Hamza and Al Shamsi, lawyers and advocates. Um, but 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 it is a challenge for a lot of employees when you think to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I've challenged them because I'm entitled to get paid for you know my flight or my holidays or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But it is a challenging position where you think, well, hang on, I'm nine months into my 12 month visa. a 12 month rental <laughs> agreement uh, i've got my visa here that's attached and my wife's attached to it and so forth and suddenly those pressures mount up and you think oh i'll 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 i i won't follow this through because if they get rid of me then i i don't have i don't have as we say a leg to stand on so i think this <laughs> would come as you know quite comforting to many employees across the uae yeah yeah i mean uh, that is a risk and and we see this all the time i mean most people are always afraid of losing their job because they are asking for their rights we've seen it time and time again it's usually those few outliers that go and say you know what i'm not standing for this i'll find a way to make it work alternatively but it is a problem it is a growing concern and unfortunately the new law doesn't really address that much and there is no way to protect other than because at the end of the day the employer has a right to terminate mm-hmm. any employee right they just have to pay them what they're due mm-hmm. that's their risk but um we still think you know if it's a company that is willing to do this to employees and not really put too much weight on it maybe it's not the company you should be working for yeah i mean it's it's a very very tricky situation one as an employee one it falls is. in right uh, you want to fight for your right you want to get what you're worth uh, but at the same time you also need to look at the security part of it because you know i mean yes the job sure. market is improving as we speak but uh, you know not not everyone has the luxury of having a job offer in hand while they are fighting with their current employee 100% and 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 again this is this is the problem you know um if you want to talk about fairness uh the laws are not necessarily fair or logical they are the way they are and in this particular case um uh, employees are not afforded something more than what is granted to them under the law unfortunately and mm-hmm. and at the end of the day it it's based on their uh risk assessment their their appetite for you know steering the uh, the boat a little bit and whether they want to fight it based on principle and right or you know what i'll 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 keep quiet right now the one thing i wanted to actually add is if you are not granted what you have a right to 
you mm-hmm. can still, it's, let's say, if six months down the line decide to terminate you, you have a right to still claim uh, the previous six months' rights that you wanted before. Okay. Okay. The caveat is one year. I so see. there's a time bar of one year. If you've waited more than one year for an unpaid salary, mm-hmm. the courts will not grant you that salary. But if you are 11 months in and you are requesting that salary by court, they will grant it. When it comes, if it was 12 months. When it comes down to, to, to employees who uh, who um, uh, are certainly in a situation where I understand what they're thinking, it may, it may certainly be, be unethical, but they're, they're, they're chasing those funds. That, that comes down to some, at least some, there's some protection there for them that they can go back to that period six months ago. Uh, we've had a message that's come through on 0586861003. Uh, this is a message uh, that's come through. Hi, I'm really enjoying uh, listening to Ahmed this afternoon. I'm wondering... How will my gratuity be calculated if a person has worked for over 10 years? Will it be a full 30 days of the salary or will the first five years still be on basic? So first five years is always going to be on basic. The next five years after that will be based on uh, the, the, the 30 days, the full days, sorry. So 21 days for the first five will always be the same. There is no change to that. Okay. So the 10 year doesn't matter. It's always first five years will be 21 days, Sec, uh, six, seven, and eight and onwards will be based on uh, the full salary, the full basic salary. Mm-hmm. The one exception to that is, I mean, the, the limit is that it does not exceed two years worth of salaries. That's the stop uh, uh, or the maximum cap that the law has put in. So let's say your basic is 30,000, your, your full salary is 35. And the full payments we've calculated goes beyond the total of two years. They cap it at two. Okay. So, yeah. yeah so, it, so 35 into 24. Yeah, it'll, it'll be 35, let's say. No, it won't be 35 into 24. It'll be 35 into the first five years based right. on 30 day, uh, 21 days. 21 days. Then year six, seven, and eight will be a nine and whatever after that. Mm-hmm. will be based on full basic salary. So it'll be 35, 35, 35. Makes sense, okay. Another question that's come through, well, what is the situation if I have uh, certain terms where when I leave my holiday pay will be paid out, but the company wants to mm-hmm. introduce a new policy uh, whereby annual leave will be capped and if it's not used, it will expire. Is that able to be enforced or, or with, without the employee's uh, approval or can, can companies simply change the, uh, the, the employee terms and conditions? So the, the, the labor law is usually the bare minimum. You cannot opt into something that is below the basic. So let's say if they told you, we're going to give you instead of 30 calendar days, we're going to give you 20, and you sign on it, the law will always protect you and lift that up to, tw- to 30 days. Okay. That's the first thing you have to always understand. Now, let's say, and the second thing is, employees are always entitled to annual leave per year. Now, the employer has the right to determine when they should be taking that leave, but they have to take it. If there is an internal policy that is passed to employees saying that you can either roll over a maximum of five days or 10 days per year, the, the company has the right to do so. Okay. Okay. Provided that they have not prohibited him from, fl- from taking annual leave during the year. Mm-hmm. So he's applied two, three times. He's been rejected those two, three times. The year has passed and they're like, oh, well, you can only roll over five. That is not permitted. They would ha- he can't file for the remaining 25 days off. Right. This is interesting, yeah. you know, because uh, there, there are organizations that, you know, uh, have, have these uh, things where you cannot roll over leaves. It will, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, lapse if you don't use them. But then, uh, you know, uh, luckily COVID was around. That gave us a bunch of ho- uh, extra holidays. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we couldn't yeah. travel. So <laughs> two true. years, if you're employed during COVID, then we have like at least what 60 plus whatever this year brings in another mm-hmm. 30. So you have like what 90 days of holidays. So, yeah, I mean, this, this is going to be a tricky situation for many organizations. Yeah, we've had one client, but this was based on the old law, where some of the employees who had been there for 15, 16 years had about 190 days of annual leave wow. still accumulated from the years before. Yeah. So, I mean, they paid them out. They said, you know what, we, these were days that were supposed to be granted to them. We will pay them out as per the law. And they did pay them, but brought them back to zero again.
Yeah, my, I understand that. It's Ahmed Al-Khali from mm. Hamzad Al-Shamsi Lawyers and Advocates. It's always great to hear your advice and wisdom. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Talk 100.3 again this afternoon. It's been my pleasure. Thank you both, and uh, thank you to everybody listening as well. If there are any questions, always available. Okay, so it's Hamzad Al-Shamsi Lawyers and Advocates. That's Ahmed Al-Khali. And you can, if you missed any of that, you can always get a copy of the podcast. We'll put that up that you can get a few more details or get in contact. But that does show you that, you know, things are, are, are becoming more modernised, that there's a little bit more employee protection for some people. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, in fact, with the new laws coming in, uh, it keeps in mind everyone who's working here. And and rightly so, you know, with so many international organisations setting up their branches here, uh, you know, you this is becoming all the more uh, a melting pot of uh, different cultures, different communities, different nationalities. And uh, thus, uh, the labor law has to be uh, more of a, has to have a more global approach than a very, uh, you know, uh, employer-centric uh, mindset. You're on TSB, Talk Sport Business here on Talk.